Let's do that. Works better. Let's do that. It works better. Well, finally, off to Greg's. It's been a long winter. Not going to stay long, but hopefully we can get a few things accomplished. We'll talk to you later. Hi, I'm Jason. Hi, I'm Greg, and you're watching Two Old Guys with Crossbows. We haven't been uh, very um, active. Active this week. <laughs> no, we haven't. I'm actually just getting over. I just had the flu or whatever. I had a, and I'm still feeling the effects of it. Jason had some health issues. And, uh, this past winter, kidney stones and all kinds of stuff. So it kept us pretty much in the house. Yeah. But spring is here, and bear season is already open here. But yeah, but, but yeah, but we but, can't get anywhere near our bear site. So <laughs> yeah. you know, we 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 didn't go out to see what it looked like. So this is the road to our south bear site. It's, uh, as you can see, not totally impassable, but it's not likely that we would get into the field where our bear site is. So this is the road into our north site. And I think it'll be a few weeks before we can get across this field into this site for sure. It'll be a couple weeks before we can get into the bear sites. But uh, we did get take the uh, Air Venturi out. And we did a little bit of shooting with it. Well, we, we actually um, put the little chronograph on that I picked up and, and uh, I was testing that. So that's basically what this video will be about today is, is uh, showing you what it looks like out by where the bear sites are or yeah. where we have to go in, and then also what we were doing with the Air Venturi and a reading on the, the pellets and some slugs that we shot. Yeah, um, that well, was fun. Yeah, the weather was pretty good today. Yeah, it was, was not bad. It was only about four degrees, but uh, it was nice while the sun was out. As soon as the yeah. clouds come, <laughs> yeah. you notice the difference. Yeah, you notice the difference big time. Four degrees Celsius were our American viewers, that's only about 40 degrees, so it's yeah. not overly warm. No, it wasn't overly warm. But, but anyways, it wasn't, it wasn't 40 below, so that was good. <laughs> but anyways, stay tuned and we'll get on with the video and show you what's going on. This is the chronograph that I picked up. It's the HTX3005. Um, I did not get it from AliExpress. I did a screenshot so I could show it here. This is what it came with. And I'm not going to do a full review on this chrono today. There are lots of videos on YouTube where guys have done reviews and showed all the features and everything. Uh, apparently, this chronograph was designed for paintball guns, but then they made it a little smaller and a smaller hole, and it works great for pellets and air rifles. And I picked one up just to help fine tune my gun so I can see the feet per, section, per second of the pellets or the slugs. And the pellets I put through it, I was getting uh, with two turns in and uh, the settings that I had, I was getting about 800 feet per second. But I wasn't getting the great accuracy. It was a new pellet I was trying and uh, it wasn't working so great. But then I wanted to try some slugs through it. And I tried some 30 grain slugs, but I was only getting about 
a little over 600 feet per second with those. And then I tried the Nelson arm slugs and 23 grain. And I was getting almost 700 feet per second, uh, averaging 670 feet per second around there. But I'll show that in the video coming up. And they were grouping quite well. But I thought I would put this screenshot in so you could see what the chronograph actually looks like and what it comes with. And the price there is about, I, I paid a little more for mine. Like I said, I didn't get it on AliExpress. I think I paid $46 for mine. So they're quite affordable, and for your air gun and that, they work quite well. So what the hell are we doing? <laughs> well, it's kind of kind of getting springy, so we've come out to uh, do a couple sh shots with the with the gun. We were checking out, getting into the bear sites. Yeah, we're just out at the farm here, out at the one range, and we're going to set up some targets, and hopefully, I'm going to try out that um, little chronograph. Yes, at sight, at, at, at sight in and test out. What 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 pellet gun is this? Oh, this is the Air Venturi that I haven't really had a chance to get out. Bought last fall. And I had it out once and did a little bit of sighting in, but I never really tested the chronograph and fine tuned it. I don't know how much fine tuning will get done today, but I want, just want to see what kind of uh, speed I'm getting out of the pellets and out of the slugs. So, that's what we're up to right now. We're going to get set up and do some shots, and and we'll show you some chronograph footage and and some target shot shooting and see what kind of groups we're getting at 30 yards. Or... Now these first shots here were with some pellets, some new pellets that I was trying out. The groups weren't very good, but the feet per second, these were 18 grain pellets. And the feet per second were fairly consistent. I was happy with that, but I was not happy with the groups I was getting. So I was going to move on and try some slugs. The spread I was getting on the pellets average from 766 to uh, 786, so fairly consistent feet per second. These are the shots with those new pellets I was trying out, and uh, they're 18 grain, but I was not impressed with the group. This is only at 30 yards. Uh, mind you, I was shooting off my shooting stick, um, not a totally bench, steady bench press, but the, the group wasn't very good at 30 yards at all. Another thing was, is the target was in the shade. Um, I was having trouble seeing the target through the ATN scope, so this is the kind of group that I got. Not a very impressive group for 30 yards, but a two inch group. And yes, that is an old pizza box lid. <laughs> now, as you can see, these are with the Nelson Specialty Ammo, the 23 grain slugs. And I'm getting over 600 feet per second with the setting gun done the way I have it. 644. Right now I have my regular set at about 1900 and my hammer spring all the way in. But they are grouping much better and uh, about a one inch group here, like I said, off of the shooting stick. And the next thing will be to take it out and try it on some squirrels and gophers and see how we do. So stay tuned. Well, there you have it. Um, on the pellets, I'm getting nearly 800 feet per second on the settings on the gun that I have. I've got the regulator set at 1900 on the Air Venturi Avenger. And I do that more to conserve air. Right now I'm getting 40 to 50 shots per fill. And I like it that way. Um, so with the slugs, they're traveling a little slow according to what the guys are saying online. 
Uh, slugs like to travel, they say, between 900 to 1,000 feet per second or over 1,000 feet per second. I don't even know if the urban tree will push them that fast. But the pellets, it's fine. Uh, 800 to 850 feet per second. Um, in that range, even 750. Uh, you know, it, it's again, there'll be more fine-tuning of the gun. I, these, uh, This was just a quick test to get it ready and get it on target and, and get out and do some hunting because of course it was in Saskatchewan we have tons of gophers or ground squirrels, a striped ground squirrel and uh, they're pretty small and you got to get pretty close to shoot them anyways, 30-40 uh, yards max, they're pretty tiny but uh, yeah and I did get out gopher hunting and there was a lot but there will be more fine-tuning of the Air Venture Avenger coming up in future videos uh, as they take it out and try different pellets and and uh, some different slugs that I have. But I'm liking these NSA slugs the way they shoot. I use them on the gophers. Um, I got a crow, I got a magpie, uh, and all of that footage is coming very soon. So stay tuned. The, probably the next videos will be some hunting videos of the gophers and the squirrels and, and magpies. Spring is here in Saskatchewan. I've finally been out and I've been active again. As you can see, maybe you can tell, I've got a little bit of sun. And that's uh, great. Getting out there and getting active and being outside in, in the air again. Instead of in the house, hiding from the cold. <laughs> because it does get cold here in Saskatchewan. <laughs> But uh, I wanted to show what the chronograph, how that chronograph worked and, and how I'm going to use it to fine tune that gun. It's a very inexpensive little chronograph. It was basically designed for paintball guns and then they uh, made them a little bit smaller or a smaller hole on them. And they work great, like uh, for air guns. Um, passing the pellets through there and you get your feet per second. You can also Put in there your um, grain weight, uh, your coefficiency and all that. I didn't bother doing that in this video. One of the things I did in the video is I said that the pellets that I was trying out, those super uh, point pellets were 18 grain. Sorry, my mistake. They're 14.5 grain. So, and, uh, but I haven't tried any of my other pellets. Uh, I know my Benjamin had liked the, the uh, Discovery pellets, Benjamin Discovery pellets, and I will be trying them out uh, later on and we'll be stretching out the range a bit. Those, were, those shots were all 30 yards. I was just getting the gun sighted in. I was shooting off my shooting stick, not the steadiest rest to shoot off of. And the sun was shining where we were sitting and yet the target was in the shade and I had trouble seeing the the box or the pizza box lid with the crosshairs on it but once I put those dots on I could see the dot but still to uh, get yourself totally accurate you want a crosshair design on there to put your hair crosshairs on and uh, know that you're shooting the same position each time to see what kind of groups you're getting and I'll be doing more of that on the bags and on the shooting table. But uh, that's about it for today's video. I just wanted to give you an update of how that uh, chronograph worked and a little bit about fine tuning the gun. Um, I don't want to turn my regulator pressure up too much because I will lose shots. And when I was out gopher hunting, one fill of the gun wasn't enough. I almost needed to take my compressor out there because I don't have a pony bottle and I can't afford to buy one right now. So, anyways, stay tuned. The squirrel and gopher hunting is coming real soon.